with Dr. Brenda Jefferson, an apostle of the Lord who teaches in the authority of Jesus Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit, imparting wisdom and knowledge for good success through kingdom living. Brought to you in part by Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries, International Covenant Partner. I'm Mr. And I'm Mrs. Maris. And, and we, we are interwoven, interwoven with, with God. God. Coming to you today, just want to kind of talk to you about your vision, uh, being visionaries of God in your marriage. Mm -hmm. um, God has a plan for all of our marriages. Amen. And uh, so he, he imparts <laughs> that plan, that wisdom, that knowledge, and that understanding in you and your spouse so mm -hmm. that y'all can accomplish his goal for his work and for his good. Amen. We got to understand that that is so much more to your marriage than just being a uh, husband and wife. It's it's about expanding God's reign and rule in the earth. Mm -hmm. Your marriage is so much more. Marriage was is a is a spiritual institution more than a natural institution. That's right. It's divine institution created by God. So only the way that God says that it, it should be is what matters. Not mm -hmm. it was not nothing that we had to come along and evolve as we uh, right. as we grow or lean into our own understanding. But marriage is created by God, mm -hmm. instructed by God, and instituted by God. So that's why we have to be in a partnership with Him in order to live out our lives through Him, with Him in our marriage. And so, Amen. one thing we just want to kind of talk about is. Um, in your marriage, getting back to that state of where Adam was whole, Eve was whole. Because along the way, through life, we, we, we picked up on some things that have caused us to be broken, mm -hmm. have caused us to need healing, or we have we have taken on some doctrines or some worldly things that mm -hmm. need to fall off of us. And mm -hmm. so... We're going to kind of share, and it's called Being Visionaries of Marriage. And my wife, you're going to give the definition mm -hmm. for? The definition of visionary is someone that thinks about the future or advancements creatively, imaginatively. They see ahead, prepare, and establish accordingly. Okay. Now, the vision. God has given us a vision and we're going to share our vision that God has given us today mm -hmm. and actually we are actually living it out right before you right yeah. now and so um, you just relationship with God is, is, is the key to receiving the vision mm -hmm. understanding the vision and then walking it out with walking him out, because yes. it was never intended for us to do this by ourselves, by ourselves. but to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. As we see, we go through the process that we see Adam. Mm -hmm. God breathes life into Adam, and he sits him in the garden uh, in Genesis uh, 1. He sits him in the garden, yeah. and so Adam is tending to the garden. He's tending to the garden. Now, this is his relationship with him and God. He's tending to it. And so Adam is, is naming all the animals. He's tending to the garden, and what's incredible is is that he's in the presence of God and he doesn't realize that he needs anything. Come on. He's in the presence of God. He has the garden. He has everything he needs. Mm -hmm. Until one day, God sees that it's not good for Adam to be alone. To be alone. And so where we make the mistake at is that I start seeing that it's not good for me to be mm -hmm. alone instead of resting in God's yeah. presence because that's what Adam was doing. He was Amen. resting in the fullness of God. Yeah. He had everything that he needed and he didn't want for yeah. anything. And it wasn't until God saw that he it wasn't good for him to be alone to where God then put him to sleep and then created mm. Eve. 
So not once did Adam take his eyes off of the presence of God and put them on lack. He had no understanding of lack as long as he was in the presence of God. Right. He knew the fullness of God in his life. Yeah, and so that's, that's in our single state, in our singleness, that's where we've got to be. We've got to be whole individuals oh. uh, uh, content with being in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. That means our mind, our heart, our thinking, our actions, the way we move and breathe mm -hmm. has to be in the fullness of God and, yeah. and being content that Adam didn't even realize that he needed mm -mm. help. I mean, he had God. He was in full and absolute communion with God. Amen. And then God saw that it wasn't good for him to be asleep, so he put him to sleep. And so now he, 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 he pulls a rib, and then he creates Eve. Adam's asleep. Mm -hmm. Eve is, is here. Yeah. Communing with God. So in that moment, she didn't say, hey, God, wake him up. Yes. I need this is I need him. God didn't she she didn't, she didn't say that. Yeah. She was communing with God. Amen. So she was alone with God, not knowing that she needed mm -hmm. anybody not else. Not even yeah. And and, yeah. and and you could probably see that she saw that he was asleep. Adam was asleep, but she wasn't like, Hey, wake him up. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to him. This is what I need. Yeah. But she was complete in her communion with God. Mm -hmm. And so you have Adam's Amen. asleep. Eve is spending time with God. So now God wakes up Adam. Yeah. God wakes up Adam and then Adam looks at Eve and said he recognized her and he says yes. now this is bone of my bone, mm. flesh of my flesh. So he recognizes that this is this mm -hmm. is me. And I remember if I could be if I could be honest uh, for a moment when I first met my wife when I saw her, I actually saw a better version of me. Amen. And I she had I had diamonds all over me. I had uh, pearls, gems. It, it was just a better version of me. So I recognized because I truly believe that that God does that for every man. And so we have to be in partnership with mm -hmm. him, living out our lives in him, being content with just him in order right. for us to see whom God has created for us. Right. You know, and so. And I, this is what um, the Spirit of the Lord gave to me, is that when God was um, creating Eve and she was in the presence of God, he was projecting marriage onto her, into her, intertwining it into her very being. But get this, it was not about an earthly marriage. Mm -hmm. It was about the marriage that she would have with him, mm -hmm. understanding who you are as the bride. Yeah. And when you have that understanding of marriage and you come into the fullness of that, I'm already married for my maker is my husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. I already understand that I'm married to God first, my very first love, yeah. which is so yeah. God brings Eve into this atmosphere of love the Lord your God with all your heart, yeah. all your might, all your soul. Let me whisper this into you before I even give you someone else. I need you to understand. Love me with all your heart, yeah. with all your might, with all your soul, because I don't want you to think about lack either. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. you to have the same mindset that I gave to Adam. Mm -hmm. And so in, in a situation like that, what you have is you have Adam, man, giving a hundred percent content with God. Amen. Then you have Eve, female, giving a hundred percent to God in her relationship. Yeah. So now whatever the man or the woman comes together in marriage and they give, it's nothing but an overflow. overflow. Yes. It's, it's not, because uh, if, if you can have a relationship where it's 50-50, then what you end up having is if I pour my 50 into you, then this you person nothing. this person has everything and then this one person is experiencing something completely different mm -hmm. and you don't want that. Right. What you want is both of y'all to be 
I'm content with God. The male, Amen. female, I'm content with God. So we come together. Mm -hmm. Our contentment in yes. our life is centered around God. So right. anything that we give is in overflow. 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 So yeah. in other words, I'm not, um, God didn't give me my husband because he, because I need my husband first. God didn't give me, God gave me him first because I need God first. And then he gave me my husband mm -hmm. and everything that he knew I would need, he had already placed it on the inside of him in the garden. In the garden. So Adam was complete, mm -hmm. whole, when Eve was presented to him. Yeah. So it, it was, it's an addition. It's not a subtraction. It's an addition because Adam Amen. was already complete. Eve was already complete. Now, this is before the fall. So this is the place that we got to get into. God's original intent. intent. God's Amen. original intent. And so then when you come together, then God starts, when you start living out this life, then he places a vision within you all. Because mm -hmm. like when I met you, I just thought you are the most amazing woman that I have ever met in my life, different from any other. And then, and I, I think I, I mentioned this before, uh, but then God showed me her end. Mm -hmm. And so when he showed me her end, what she would become, I got excited about it, <laughs> you know, and so it, it, it left an impression on my heart. And so then I tried to treat her according to what God had impressed upon me Amen. or what he saw. Yeah, my um, when I was going through my season and um, my Eve experience yeah. where God brought me mm -hmm, into the presence of God. God took me to Ezekiel 16. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at verse 6, what God says, and when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. This is the encounter that God had to have with me in my alone time with him where he had to look at me and tell me to live. He had to look at me and tell me I've created you to thrive like a plant in the field. You were created to grow up and bloom yes. and blossom. Yeah. And then when you keep going on over into verse eight, it says, then I saw that it was your season of love. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I came into a covenant with you. Now, remember, before the foundations of the world of the earth, God was already in covenant with me. Mm -hmm. And so what he revealed to me in that scripture was my spirit. I then placed on the inside of someone who I would then send to you. I came into covenant with you and I saw that it was your season of love. Mm -hmm. And just like going back into Genesis where it says, um, I saw that it wasn't good for man to be alone. I saw that it was your season of love. I came into covenant with you and then you and I became one. Yeah. I met my husband. And when I met my husband, um, now from a spiritual experience now to a natural because when the spirit of the Lord placed his spirit inside of my husband and I met Charles then I understood uh, some things about vision because when my husband came into my life I was a teacher and I was content at this level of success because that's what I knew. I had a survival mental mentality mm -hmm. where I was surviving and I was doing enough just to get by. And in my mind, this was the blessing of the Lord because, hey, at least I had enough to get me from here to here. But that really wasn't the blessing of the Lord. When my husband came, my husband came into my life and he showed me there is so much more to you than what you than what you know. Now, mm -hmm. see, now we're going into the overflow mm -hmm. because I was content with God and God alone. Mm -hmm. um, um, and my husband said we have a joke that we <laughs> that we uh, say a lot where when he met me and he asked me it was one day he asked me how much money I had and I said I, all my bills are paid I have twenty dollars left everything is fine <laughs> and he, he was thinking it's not fine that's all you have <laughs> but when he came into my life what he did was is he looked at every one of my gifts and he said I'm gonna place them before you 
And what I want you to take a look at is who you are in the will of God, not mm -hmm. outside of the will yeah. of God. He said every last one of your gifts God gave you for you to do here on earth. Yeah. He has established you here on earth for a purpose. Yeah, and and her past, she, it she wanted to write a book because she was a, a writer for a, a local newspaper. And one Sunday morning, I saw scrolls and books uh, just turning in her stomach mm -hmm. and God led me to lay hands and minister in her ear and ever since then God has been been blessing her yeah. tremendously. Amen. God has blessed us with Living Water Books Amen. publishing company. Amen. So now instead of just writing a book, she's now publishing books. Yes. See that's that's how God when God brings you to to your your ordained Amen. spouse is it, it's it's the overflow it's yes. it, it, it's more it's more it's more and so then so now she's she's publishing books she's she's growing and so where her vision was just just to write one book now <laughs> she's pro published 10 or 11 books yes. and i have supported her in every mm -hmm. way made sure she had everything the electronics yeah. the, the <laughs> everything that i needed he made sure that i had that's that's the overflow because yeah. when god gives a vision um about you to to your spouse god has already given them everything the instincts that they need to yeah. the 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 eyes to see mm -hmm. beyond because my husband saw beyond my survival techniques mm -hmm. and said there's more to you yeah. there's more than what you know mm -hmm. and like we say Every last one of those gifts, he took it and he said, this is you. Yeah. This is you. Mm -hmm. And the multiple books that he saw going around, going around in my womb were not just for me, yeah. but also for our marriage ministry, mm -hmm. as well as other other authors that I would soon come to meet, other scribes in the land. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we say your marriage is so much more. It's so much more than just... Uh, Husband and wife paying bills, wearing the same T-shirts, <laughs> and, and, and just kind of living this thing out, and just hoping that we make it. It's it's so much more. But this is how we we are now uh, helping people mm -hmm. put their testimony on paper Amen. to share. This is how you expand God's reign and rule in the earth because Amen. that's what it's about. It's about promoting Jesus Christ. And so so now we've come in together and and I can say as far as my testimony, mm -hmm. one day I was just about to one go day, there. yeah, my wife asked me, she said, What do you want to do? Um and I said, Well, to be honest with you, I would like to be because when we when we start we first started out uh we we watched jimmy and karen evans on marriage today uh -huh. those 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 and are still our go-to people and so um i said baby i want to do what they're doing and so next thing you know god gave me uh the thought to uh create kingdom marriage marriage ministry mm -hmm. and then my wife started with the, the the anointing that's on her life for the graphics and stuff she started um creating flyers yeah, helping me design pictures <laughs> yeah and, and she had never went to school she had never uh taken a class or any kind of class whatsoever but it was the anointing the hand of God Amen. on her life that brought all this forward so when you are in full alignment with heaven uh -huh. what the book was written in the books of heaven about you yes when you come into yes, alignment yes, with that yes, things yes, just yes. begin to flow just, yeah and and, and it's, it's not to bring glory to Ladidra and Charles or Living Water Books or to Kingdom Marriage Marriage Ministry, mm -hmm. but it's to give God yes. all the honor and glory because it's a testament of Amen. Him working in us, yeah. through us, and with us to spread the good news Amen. and to help people live out marriage the right way. God's intended way mm -hmm. is not for you to live out marriage in a painful way. Mm -mm. Or and, to be struggling yeah. um, constantly with 
uh, things that have attached themselves to you mm -hmm. in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. And see, we can say that because, see, in the garden, remember, Adam didn't even realize that he was lacking anything. Yeah. It wasn't until the serpent came on the scene that he whispered a lie into Eve's ear and made, um, made her think or projected this lie onto her to make her think she was lacking something when in actuality, she wasn't even lacking anything. Yeah. They, they're both spending time in the pre they have a season of spending time in the, in the presence, presence of, of God. God so then when they come together yeah. they are still in the presence of yes. God God now gives them dominion over the earth mm. they have the opportunity to rule their wow. lives with authority and dominion yeah. in the earth both husband and, and wife and what we don't ever want to do is abort that time along with God and then get into a relationship prematurely. Because when you abort that time with God, all of the ingredients that you need to have a successful marriage, you have now not included that. And just imagine trying to bake a cake or, or make a meal without having all of the ingredients. You're not going to have a very successful meal at all. <laughs> and then, too, you have to consider, you have to have eyes, relationship and eyes to see mm -hmm. who you are supposed to be connected with because uh, uh, Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe once used an illustration of a, of a, a bad egg, a bad egg and a good egg. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he wanted to make an omelet. So mm -hmm. when you crack the bag, bad egg and then the good egg into it, guess mm. what? That bad egg ruins mm. the whole omelet. The good doesn't. That's why oh my God. bad company corrupts good, good character. character. So that's why it's important to be to to have that alone time. Mm -hmm. Know what's God and what's not mm -hmm. God, and then yeah. come together, and then allow God to to, to to give you His vision of your marriage. Amen. And don't try to skip the process. Yeah. Um, one thing that we all have to be thankful for is that God is an amazing visionary. Oh amazing. my God. There is no one else who can look at something and speak to it and say, become, yeah. and you, or you, you're on the path of becoming, but he's already spoken into existence. You're yeah. just walking it out. Yeah. How amazing is that? So mm -hmm. don't neglect the visionary because mm -hmm. what you need for your life and then for who, whoever you're coming in contact with and what you need for your marriage, God has already already given it to you. Yes. The Bible says that he has already given us everything yeah. that pertains to life and godliness. Yes. Yes. And that's not just a cliche. That's not just something to, to, to be said among um, you know, body of believers. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. He's really given you everything you need according to his 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 riches, his glory, um, according to life and godliness. Everything that you need is mm -hmm. right there with you. Yeah. And it's important that um, we have that alone time with God, that separate alone time, because when you do get married, the effectiveness of your single state mm -hmm. is going to determine how well you succeed or don't succeed in your marriage. So spend your single time wisely Amen. and prepare because when your spouse has a bad day, you still need to be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be taken out of the presence of God. When I have a bad day, my wife still is in the presence, in the of, presence God. of God. I'm just having a bad day. That's right. And so we were able to come together. We don't we don't seek outside the garden. We mm -hmm. don't seek outside our marriage. We don't seek outside God. We stay within to get mm -hmm. everything we need because yeah. it is already there present. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. It is within us. So Amen. we can speak life. We can go to God in prayer together. We can fast together. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do all the things necessary to allow God's vision to keep us going in mm. the right path. Amen. And you just said something so powerful. Um, listen, 
we don't go outside of the garden. We don't go outside of the presence of God to find something that we need. If you have now taken your focus off of God and you're looking at yourself and you're you're seeing lack, that means that your your eyes have become distorted. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are seeing a deceptive viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Now it's not time to get outside of the garden. Mm -hmm. It's time to get in the presence of God because in the presence of God there's fullness. There's fullness, absolutely. There's no lack there's no in the lack. presence of God. But so just to have... recap, uh, remember, let's look back. God made Adam. Adam spent a long time with God. Mm -hmm. He was working in the garden. He was tending to the garden. He was managing the garden. He was communing <laughs> with God. Yes, he yes, was doing yes. all these things. Adam, yes. And he did not see that it wasn't good for him to get be alone because the enemy, sometimes what we do is we make the fatal mistake of seeing that it's not good for ourselves for to be ourselves. alone instead of letting God see that it's, it's not, not good. Because when God sees that it's not good, then he's saying, you're ready, yes. like Ezekiel 16 uh -huh. and 8. I see that it's your season, season of love. love. And I, I passed by yes. you and saw that you were yes. ready for yes. love. Yes. And so that's what we want to get to, mm. get back to. Oh, wow. just just that part right there. He said, I spread over you. The, on, on verse 8, it tells us, so I spread my wing over you and I covered your nakedness. When I saw it was your season of love, I covered your neck. That means any areas of you that were likely to have been exposed oh, yes. to something that the enemy thought that he could grab. God said, because I saw that it was your season of love, I covered all of that. Now I can present you because now you won't go into a marriage or a relationship thirsty. Yes. You won't go yes. trying to get dehydrated. Get, get, right. <laughs> dehydrated. <laughs> right. You know, so so in his in his presence we are lacking nothing. Yes. You know, so <laughs> so funny. so so Adam, he was resting in the presence of God. God Amen. put him to sleep and now create took a rib and created mm -hmm. Eve and now she's in God's she's in God's presence and she's communing with God. Yes, yes. Singleness is very important. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a very important time because now all mm -hmm. you have to do, it just shows you that you are concerned with you yeah. and the Father. There's nobody to answer to but you and God. But you see, God. when we get married, then we also have to be concerned about one another. Mm -hmm. And then too, but we still include God in that yes. first and foremost. But in a single state, when you use your single state wisely, mm -hmm. It benefits you in your yes. marriage state yeah. because, because because marriage is a spiritual institution. And yes. too many times we try to go about it in a natural way. Amen. It's like showing up to, to, to your spouse already having a benefit package. And I have a benefit package and you have a benefit, benefit package. package. Oh, we, man. We in overflow. We in a surplus. Yes. <laughs> okay. So always get back to the original state. Man, Amen. Adam by himself, Eve by himself, content with God. And then when God woke up at him and then presented Eve, he recognized that this is the yes, one that God yes. has for me. And so that's how your marriage should be. Amen. And so remember your vision, God has a vision for your marriage. All you got to do, the Bible says we have not because we, we ask, ask not. not. So ask God, what is your plan for our marriage? Our marriage. And then partner with him and just walk it out. Amen. Again, I'm Pastor Charles. I'm Ladidra Maris. And we are interwoven, interwoven with, with God. God. Thank you. We pray that you've been tremendously blessed by the teaching of Apostle Brenda Jefferson. If you would like this message in its entirety, please call 501 813 4634 or 501 8345477 Until the next time may God bless you and keep you is our prayer